Pat Beverly got me to say this. LeBron's a top 10 all-time player. That's on clip, the court. Clip that. You know what? And you know what? I'll take that because in your book, top 10 really means top three. So, Bottom 5,000 human in the NBA, though. <laughs> Can't say that. <laughs> The Pat Bev Podcast with Roan, a very special episode as we are joined by the founder of Barstool Sports. Love that name. In some ways, the founder, the guy who made all this happen, El Presidente himself, Mr. Dave Portnoy is joining us. We're clapping it up. Yep, 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 yep. Welcome to my fucking show. uh, Thank you for having me. I'm going to be honest, Pat. I, I, so I was with Roan. We had our college basketball tournament, and he's like, are you ready for Pat Beverly? I'm like, yeah. Do you really want me on this show? Because I don't know you that well. I mean, we talked once. Where right. are you feeling out? I, like, be, I'm like, what are the bounds? Be, like, what be can yourself. I Be yourself. Don't All change. Right. Don't change. Right. You got some All shit right. to say? Say your shit. Let's, let's do this. Roan, you're, you're the host. I'll, that, I'm going to take that. I'm going to let it fly. You know coming in. I'm the number one LeBron hater in the world. I see. I, I, you know what? I did not know that until like four minutes ago. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm the league leader. Like, I'm talking back. What are we in? We're in 2022. I think I wrote in like 2014-ish, 27 reasons why I think LeBron James is the Antichrist. That was like a literal <laughs> article that I published. No, he's uh okay, okay, cool. Cause I'm like the biggest uh LeBron lover. So okay, yeah, cool. I like this dynamic already. All right. <laughs> we'll see. That's why I said it's like he know, and I know he's like the guy. Like, let me put it this way. I had I was at when the one of the years that the Cavs beat the Celtics, and I'm a Celtics oh, guy. Okay. So, I know, I know. I'm starting to see where all this hate is coming from. Yeah, and I mean one of my favorite teams, and I've been through Super Bowls with the Patriots, Red Sox World Series. Maybe my favorite team in Boston fandom was KG, Rondo, Pierce, uh, and Ray Allen. Like, yeah. And they hated LeBron. And it wasn't for show. Like, they hated him, and I hated him. In game seven, I was sitting floor. I've moved a little bit to the center, but I was in the corner. And after LeBron beat the Celtics, 10 security guys rushed in front of me like, can't say anything to LeBron. Can't say anything to LeBron. My mm. hatred of him is well known, long, and documented. No, okay. I did not know that. But it's all right. You know, everyone kind of, what well, they kind of, everyone kind of hates somebody. So I guess that's your one. You're, you're, you're obligated to your one. Yep. I went. So that's what I want to clear. It's like, do they know? Like, do they know, like, what I, but as long as we're on the same page, we're good. Yeah, we're good. It's my show. So don't worry about it. And, and my right, boss, good. who, uh, who pays me a ton of money, he doesn't give a fuck either. So don't worry about it. All right, good. <laughs> all right. Then we're good. <laughs> Yeah, I went I went back through the annals of uh, Twitter and I tried to find the genesis of Dave's LeBron hate. And I think it goes back from before there's a search function on Twitter because there's a lit there's so many tweets that are anti LeBron. And sometimes it'll be like LeBron, like had, that was a nice move by LeBron. Like there will be intermittent like 2010. You can find Dave giving LeBron a little bit of credit. Oh, but- OK. I see. OK. <laughs> well, at, yeah. so- at some point. I was forced to admit he may be pretty good at basketball. So, oh. like, <laughs> it, it took me a while to get there, but at some level, I gave up on the on the court stuff. Do you have the, the Barbie girl video? What's the Barbie girl video? Do, does does Pat have the ability to like pull up videos? Yeah, uh, that's a, yeah, I do. Let me let me see that search. If you go. To, this is one of my all-time joints. I spent like 24 hours putting this together. If you go LeBron, let me see if I do this. LeBron, I'm just Googling, flop Barbie girl. <laughs> like I made a soundtrack. Hopefully it's still up. Yeah, it's a, it's called a Davy Pays Who's Joint 10 years ago. Mike, see if you can help him find this. Uh, if you can find no, it. I got it. Hold on. Oh, you I got, think it, I got it, it, I think I come on now. <laughs> That's getting to the bottom of this. Is it the no? I don't. I I, I don't have it. Dave so seems I, super I proud just, of this too. I just googled uh, LeBron flop Barbie girl, and it's the first video. It's a YouTube four minutes. 
April 30th, 2012. And it's called Davy Page Views Joint. And it's just, I put, he's a bar. Yeah, it's just slow modes of the flop. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You made this? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I got a question. Like, now, okay, now, so so his defense, right? So he's a, he's, I don't know, 6'9", 6'10", pure fucking muscle. I'm just, I'm just a, just a hulk of a, just a bulk of a man. Yeah, he's huge. That was one of my theories. The, he was doing steroids in high school. That's no, one that's of my. No, that's not true. That's not true. I can't that's say that. That's one of my theories. So, <laughs> so goes to, the, goes to the hole all the time. Gets beat up. Scratches everywhere. Refs don't call foul due to his size. Hey, adding a little flopping helps. No. It's no doubt that it helps, but then he, he's quoted, "What's a flop? I don't even know how to flop." I've never flopped in my life. He said that. That's what created this video, I think. He said it the other day. I got to learn how to flop. Now, he may be the greatest comedian. Like, obviously, as a fan, you meet, you you just, I'm a fan. So I've never talked to him. I, for all I know, he doesn't know I exist. Who knows? And maybe he's so self-aware. He's like, I'm going to hit him with, I don't know how to flop. When you know you're a big-time flopper. No. He's a big-time flopper. No. He be getting his ass killed out there. Watch that video and come tell on, let's me. Hurry up. Let's talk. Let's talk about our, let's talk about the Lakers season. I know. I know you want to go ahead and get on top of that. Well, it's a debacle. <laughs> I mean, right? I know, but you you uh you familiar with that though, right? Because uh, I'm pretty sure that, um when Boston went to the championship last season, I think you guys were struggling a, a tad bit uh, in the beginning of the season. Yeah, I don't know. If they they were. As bad, but they were slow. Celtics were very good in the second half last season. Yeah, I think no they lost like, uh, I don't know, 13 out of 16 or 14 out of 16. You got your stats on you. I will he say. Came, if Pat came strapped, dude, he's got so I just want to make sure, like, you know, you've been through this. So I don't want to make sure that when the yeah, tides turn, I want to make sure you're still. No, listen, I, you're right. I would say the difference between you were, you, the two. The Celtics I heard are you young. Saying, you guys are old. Yeah, and I heard you saying, like, Fucking trade everybody. Like you were a big like advocate of like fuck everybody, trade everybody, you know. Did I say that you have to rec I don't I don't I don't think I said because I like their young core. I hate Kyrie. He's another guy I've hated. Why? Well, because he's well, now there's a couple of reasons. But no, I'll you can't start. Use, no, you can't use those. Can't use those. Well, I'm That's Jewish. He hates Jewish people. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if, if I'm Jewish, someone don't like me. But I hate, to my credit, I was a hater beforehand. And it's primarily started, and, and to be honest, I loved him because he and LeBron had beef. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go with Kyrie so, because I So you chose I didn't Kyrie like I did in the beginning. But when he came to Boston, here's when it started to get, I started not to like Kyrie. I think he was talking to Durant at the all-star game and it was like recorded, like maybe I'll, I'll leave Boston and I'll go with Durant. And then reporters started asking him about it. He's like, I don't want to talk about that. Why are you asking me about it? It's because, well, you're talking about it. Like Kyrie has a unique ability to say things, do things, and then get mad when the media asks. It's like, we only know about it, Kyrie, because of you. Like you're the one who put it out. And then when he was in Celtics, it didn't go great. Like he was putting the, I, he threw like Sage. shit on, yeah, on, on, on center court. So and KG ripped him for it too. It's like, I don't care. Listen, I have no problem. I actually like athletes and you're sort of like one well, talk shit, do your thing, but just don't complain when people give it back to you because that's the nature of the beast. Yeah. Uh. So that's my issue with, and by the way, he's been a team killer anywhere he's gone at this point. He's, he's consistently killing teams. Like but he, he's probably the most skilled guard to ever play the game. Also unbelievably skilled, but that's probably the frustration that comes with, like I saw a quote when he was doing all this stuff. And, and by the way, if you said, let me say this on, on the shit that he just got in trouble with, he, he tweeted out a movie Yes, it's offensive. I'm Jewish. It's like they're saying the Holocaust and shit didn't happen. That's offensive. Fine. Like Deshaun Jackson on the Eagles said something that was construed as anti-Semitic. Julian Edelman reached out. He's like, hey, man, like, I think this is anti-Semitic. Would you listen? And he did. And it blew over. No one talked about it five seconds after. Where Kyrie really got in trouble, in my mind, is 
And even if he didn't believe it, when they're like, hey, do you hate Jews? No. I, I, if he just said that, I'd probably be fine. But it took for him being suspended. And then how do you believe any? I don't believe, like, he wasn't saying anything until the Nets were like, you're suspended. Well, that's hard for me to believe that apology. You got your livelihood sort of taken away. You didn't apologize. And I don't, I don't actually truly deep down with him. I think he's kind of like an idiot. Like it was no, a flat earther. No, no, you can't <laughs> well, say that. You can't say you that. You can't say that. Like I, you're entitled to everything else you said but until the end. And you can't say but that. He said, he's a, he said the earth was flat. I, I mean, that's his perspective. But all right. So it, it, like in, in the scheme of saying things, like that's what I mean. I, I'm starting to see it. Maybe you, all the star players, because you and KD just had something recently. Well, he came at me. He he said I can't. Sh- <laughs> he said I can't shoot. He can't. Uh, oh yeah, I seen the video. I yeah, think it's he, it's not it's it's not your form. I think it's just your base and and the pants you had on forced your base to be even tighter as correct. they need to be. So like any way you finish, you finished left, the ball went left. You finished right, the ball went right. I don't think it's really like up here with you. I think it's just all base. You just you 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 need athletic gear that day. The, the, right. I was wearing a suit. I have a bum shoulder, which is not an exaggeration. Yeah, so I heard also, about that one. Yeah. The, the there's some guy I guess who's like the the shooting coach to the stars. Like uh Lethal Shooter? L- lethal Shooter. Okay. He reached out to me. He's like, let let me get you fixed up. So there was a lot of a lot of slander. No, I I'm not a star hater. I mean, those Who are some stars look- you like, Dave? Can you can you name some stars that you you don't hate? Well, I mean, if you play for the Celtics, you're a star. I love you. I like love their entire team. I, I just bought courtside tickets. So I, I love all the Celtic stars and they got some of the best stars in the game. Like if you go down the history. Like I mean, I like Jordan. I, I you're talking about. Well, I'm talking stars. about somebody like now, other than anyone from Boston. Uh, uh, somebody other than Boston that I think is like. I mean, I like the freak. I like Giannis. Okay, that's one. Um, and again, it, as a fan, it does matter who your rivalry is with. Like that's so, where so mine one. started. What's that? So one. No, no, I I, I like Luca. Um, I I think Booker's good. It's okay trying to think who else i would like I, i'd be like yes this is somebody you know what i should look because i picked a bunch of games i went to that i want to go to i built it on stars what about um, Embiid? Uh, i said Embiid. you bad connection over there yeah no <laughs> oh, he's bad. an interesting cat because i actually like him but i think he's i like him but i will say he talks a ton for never winning shit. He's the most dominant big man to play the game since Shaquille O'Neal. I, listen, I also said Shaq would never win an NBA title. So I'm not saying I'm like the most brilliant guy who ever lived. And he's very good. But when I watched the Sixers in the playoffs, and the Boston has played him a lot, and this should tell you, I, 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 as a fan, I want him shooting. Like I was, I wanted Embiid with the ball. He's turning mm-hmm. over a lot in the clutch, maybe because he's getting too much pressure. Didn't have the like teammates around him, but I wanted Embiid with the ball in the playoffs. Uh, but I do like him as a person. Uh, and if I was a Philly guy, I'd probably love him. If he was at Boston, he'd be the best center in the world. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, okay. Respect. I ride Respect. or die for my guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I like that. I fuck with that. I fuck with that. I fuck with and that. And I make no, I make no bones about that. Like, it takes Kyrie Irving, literally, I wrote, I hate Kyrie Irving when he played for the Celtics. You have to be an enormous asshole to get to that point because I will give you the benefit of the doubt 
like for my guys till the death. Like I'll defend basically anything, but he was just so, so much. He was just always complaining, always complaining. It's just, you know, I had a, like I, I wanted um, Isaiah back. Like when, like I, okay. I, I would have much rather take him. Like it was a team. There were, seemed like they're all happy with each other that I would rather root for a guy who's less talented than somebody who just is presenting themselves as a jerk all the time. Hmm. Dave, who hates it, it, LeBron more, you or Skip Bayless? I don't know where the Skip stuff, I feel like I predated Skip, but he's more consistent for sure. Like, I remember I used to stay up with the LeBron post-conferences in the NBA Finals to make fun of, like, you know what, like when he made fun of uh, Dirk for coughing, I remember that. He was just following D. Wade, everything he said. He had no original thoughts. But I've cooled. Can't say that. He, di- he didn't. Can't say that. He was just like a role player to D. Wade. No, 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 you can't say that. You're entitled to your opinion, but you can't say that. I said it. I know, but you can't like, yeah, so I have to know. Okay, he said it, people, but you can't say that. It's not nice to say, but okay, keep going. <laughs> um. <laughs> Wait, what was the what? Oh, who predicted? Well, he's more consistent now. LeBron, for all as much as I followed, he did take his enormous success. Even though, if uh, what's his name doesn't get booted out versus Golden State, they probably don't beat Golden State on the like fake headbutt that I think he. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. I don't. Uh, the I mean, punch we got we got kicked. Yeah, was it kicked? It was kicked. Like, do you think they win that championship if that play doesn't happen? We don't know. Yeah, that's a no. But then, I mean, what, it, it, do they win a championship or do they lose a championship when Kyrie hurts his hurts his knee and they and LeBron has to take the team to the finals with Della Dova as the starting point guard? They missed in Game Seven of that game that Kyrie hit the shot that won the championship. There were thirty trips without a basket in that game. Great I, defense. I, I, yeah, well, if you're the best player in the history of the world, I, I don't think I don't think MJ is missing thirty straight times down. The MJ's court. never played Game Seven. Yeah, yeah, too good. Man. What do you think of that stat? The NBA Finals stat that everyone the haters will throw out. LeBron's like what under five hundred, and MJ never lost. It's a different game. It's a different game. I think it's a lot. You know, I wouldn't say you know the past game is less talented. I just think it's a lot more talent. Uh, in today's game with a lot more individual players, that's all. Yeah. So the dynamic of winning is, isn't this, you know, it's hard. I mean, it was hard for Michael Jordan when he did, obviously. You know, it was hard for Kobe and Shaq when they did. It's just, you know, more people are becoming more intelligent with the game of basketball and it's evolving so fast that, you know, you got a guy that can shoot at 50 feet, two guys on one team that can shoot at 50 feet with Kevin Durant, with, the, you know, so it's just the dynamic is different. Yeah, but to answer your question, Roan, <sighs> His success has made it harder to like. I was really going oh, at it. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. like so. He, okay, he kind of he gave me a rebirth when he went to Miami, and we're not gonna win one. We're not gonna win two. We're not gonna win three. Like everything he does, it's like the parade he threw for himself. It really elevated me into a hater. And then when he left and went to Cleveland, like he'll never win in Cleveland. So. I, I keep finding things to latch. But he, like, I still don't think he's won in L.A. I don't count the bubble. That's my new. I don't count the bubble. <laughs> I was in the bubble. Yeah, but it, it, that's different. If you don't have to go play a true road game, how is that real? Every game is a road game. For who? Then there's no home games? Zero. That's the, that, that's the thing. It's no home games. It's like a rec league championship. The, which is harder. So, so if we, the Clippers would have won that year. I wouldn't have been a champion. I couldn't Correct. wear that. I wouldn't have been hounding you like it, but yes. Wow. And you know, a lot of people, they look at you as a bad, you really a cool dude, man. Like you, you, you're not fucked up. A lot of people look at you a little fucked up. You're not fucked up at all. You're like, you're a very like witty, intelligent man. Like you, you're like, you know, like you're just yeah. entitled to your opinion. I, I fuck with it. Respect it. Thank you. Fuck I appreciate it. it. Pat, no I, I, I got to ask, Pat, you're 10 minutes into the Dave Portnoy experience. How does it line up with what you had thought? Because I, I feel like he came out guns blazing, you know, like other people. Well, Meatball I, Molly, he's going to protect some employees. You, he's like, oh, Pat can handle it. You know, Pat Pat is, uh, you know, Pat. I have no other way. I said that to you. It's like, I, I can't go on and act like I love LeBron. I mean, I, how am I going to do that? No, I fuck with it. You know me. I, I fuck with it. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. 
just don't, as long as we don't, you know, cross certain lines. But no, he's just entitled to, to his own shit. I fuck with it. Good. This show is brought to you by Game Time, the exclusive Game ticketing time. partner of Barstool Sports. Game Time is created by fans and for fans. It's a new ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows. And they guarantee the lowest price. They crack the code on how to score deals on last minute tickets. That means right before the game, you want to get in there, you're in the parking lot, you're like, hey, I've tailgated, but I want to spend some more money and get into the game. You won't spend that much because they have the best deals over at Game Time. The purchase process is only two. Two taps, 10 seconds, buy your tickets, they're delivered to the phone, no printer needed, skip the hassle, enjoy the moment with Game Time. Download the Game Time app and go to the account Game tab <laughs> to create a login and redeem code PATBEV for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time, last minute tickets. We should make price. it do 21 for my jersey number Guaranteed. instead of $20. Yeah, 20. Oh, yo, $21 off? Game Time. For after this batch of ads, $21 off. We'll make sure that we look out. $21 off your first purchase using code PATBEV. Shout out to the real ones. Shout out to the real ones. Shout out to, shout to the real, out to the real ones, real. dude. No yeah, one's real. You guys know them. who you are. Yeah, the people who, yeah, the front or the back. Shout out to the real ones. I, but, but that pizza review, I got to get on that because I'm a big pizza guy myself. I am. So I... I yeah, I got to be in L.A. in a couple of weeks. You know, I reviewed again. I'm going to keep revealing layers of how deep my hate goes. So LeBron is a major investor in this pizza chain called Blaze. Yeah. Um, yeah, I gave it a zero. <laughs> yeah. How many, how many numbers? It's zero through ten. I've never given a zero. I've done like probably, I don't know, 4,000 pizza reviews. And I've what given did you, one. Did you do, what, what type of pizzas did you do? Was it like Just a pepperoni? Cheese. It a didn't cheese? matter. It, geez, I always do cheese. Wouldn't it have mattered? It was. I knew LeBron was like a major investor. Zero. But D Wade is also. I don't hate D Wade. So, if you told D Wade what would Blaze piece would be, what would it be? Well, it's still zero. I'd have to be honest. <laughs> but I'd be like, I'd be like, you, you, you got hooked up with the wrong guy. You know. <laughs> Respect. Dave, Respect. I thought you gave that other one a zero, where you like you went into the pizza place and they they gave you shit, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, spit yeah, it yeah. out or something like yeah. that. Yeah, that was in Kentucky. That was uh, we had a. Yeah, little I don't beef. know how to make pizza in Kentucky. Yeah. No, no, no disrespect to Kentucky. Yeah. I fuck with Joe's Pizza in New York. You don't? Where you rank those? Where you rank no, Joe's? That's good. Joe's Pizza is great. There's one okay. in L.A. I think too. Uh, they're opening. All the places are coming. Um, I, that's an eight. That's in the eights. That's a good pie. Okay. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, the new Black Panther yet? No, I haven't. Okay. You said yet, like he's definitely going to see it. I'm definitely going to see it. No, he's yeah, right. Yeah, I'm definitely. Sure. The, the first one was awesome. Why? No, I was just asked. I just wanted to know. I, just, I, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I thought there was some tie-in with pizza. Mm -mm -mm. You know, I, I just jump all, you know, it's my show. So yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. I, I, I jump all over the fucking place. So Yeah. Dave, yeah. can no, I ask? I got to see that. Can I ask what you uh, like to kind of, because Pat has referenced that it is his show. And uh, you were kind of behind the idea of giving Pat Beverly a show at Barstool. So can you kind of talk a little bit about the mechanisms now that we got all that nastiness about the Lakers and LeBron out of the way? Maybe we could talk about like kind of the mechanisms of how Pat Beverly wound up at Barstool and why you think that he's a good fit for this company. Yeah. So, I mean, NBA, I always follow the NBA. I'm a sports guy, so I, I've known about Pat forever. But it was really when I saw him go on ESPN and call, uh, what's his face, a cone, you know? And he was just airing it out, Chris Paul. And it wasn't just that beef, but mo I feel like it's very difficult to get very good podcasts from active athletes because they're cautious of what they say and NBA may be a, bit, a little bit less where the guys are a little, allowed to be a little more like outspoken, like Draymond on his can say whatever he wants, it seems like. But you need somebody who will sling it. I don't need, and we've had other pro athletes, there's plenty who come to us, but if you're going to be guarded and do like coach speak, I have no interest in that. So if you're going to go on ESPN, you're going to sling it and talk shit and just say how you feel, not necessarily even just to, talk shit, but you're just saying what you feel and what you feel about games and honest opinions. That's very good. So it felt different to me. And I think I tweeted out, I'd love to get Pat Beverly like right after. And that started the motion of doing, it. I really didn't think it was realistic 
to be honest, but it started the motion, but I was dead ass serious as we are here. And, and it's just people who will, everybody's craving as a fan for real information and get a yeah. real take and not have it be, Hey, we played hard. We did this and we did that. And we're moving that way. But most pro athletes under contract, because honestly, there's still so much money being made by the, like we had, I don't know if you know, at one point we had um, the Celtics guy. Uh, Rogier. No. Who? Terry Rogier. Terry Rogier. Scary Terry podcast. Yeah. He wasn't taken overly serious and it was kind of guarded. That does us no good. Just putting an athlete name on it. I don't care who it is. Does nothing. But if a guy's going to be open, it, it can be very good. So that's what started the process. So based on the numbers, how do you think we're doing? It's early. It was a good launch. And a lot of it's viral. But what is this? Episode three or four, right? Five. Five. How Five or six. You? I think it's good. I think there's room. Like, does it make it harder that you guys suck right now? No. I don't so give you, a fuck about that. Yeah. Well, then that's good. Yeah. I mean... It's also not NBA season, to be totally honest. I mean, right. it is. That's yeah. That's yeah. That's the main part of it. Yeah, for but sure. Like in you know what Christmas, you could argue like those Christmas Day games. But once the NFL goes away, all eyes kind of turn to the NBA, and that's when it ramps up. The NBA is a long season, and I don't think most people, most fans who are fans of sports aren't glued to the NBA yet. Like it comes a little later. You'll have your NBA guys who like that's their sport. But if you're like me, you're watching everything. We're getting into the end of college football, NFL playoffs starting like that. Still, I don't really pay attention to the NBA. Now the Lakers records, a storyline, but you know, the NBA is not leading sports center every day. Not yet. At least. Yeah. Or if it is, well, it's something I, about the Lakers. I guess our shows. I guess our show's okay. Wrong for the most part. <laughs> How do you think? What do you think? I think it's I think it's swaggy. I think it's uh the look of it is great. I think the dialogue is uh in different places but at the same time consistent. I think we talk about hard topics. I think we talk about good topics. I mean, I I fuck with the pace of it. Um obviously Ron is, you know, made made my job, you know, very easy. Uh I fuck with it. I like it. I like it. I like it. What the was start your thought? This may be a tough question. What was your thought on that whole Kyrie thing? Uh, I didn't read into it. I, 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 I didn't want to. I didn't want to. You know, I, we were getting our ass beat so much, I really didn't even have time to kind of see what was going on with other people. But I, I kind of wanted to. If, I, if, 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 if I'm not Kyrie, I, I don't understand clearly all the, all the pieces on the board. So... Right. I can on, I can only understand it from Pat Beverly's perspective, you know. So like, and with that being said, like I don't know, you know, how he's feeling that day, what he's thinking that day. I don't know, you know, what his beliefs are. I don't talk to Kyrie every day, so uh, it, it's it's kind of hard to be engaged in something when you don't know the whole, you know, the you know the whole yeah. full thing. Yeah. Like I said, from my perspective on that, it's like yeah, anybody can like I I wouldn't I wouldn't ring somebody up and be judge jury executioner on tweeting out that movie because to be honest i didn't even know that movie exists and i've seen people like well they sell it on amazon what's amazon doing fair question like what are they doing why is that even available so i wouldn't ring him up on that my my issue is how he handled the controversy and whether he's just a dig in his heels but it's like to me even if you didn't believe it just give the people what they want you move on that was where i was like maybe it almost made me think there was more to it because like, why are you, yeah, why are you that's fighting what everybody so thought, hard? Yeah. That's what everybody thought. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate situation. Very unfortunate. Did either one of you see uh Dave Chappelle's monologue this weekend? I thought it was very funny. I'm getting our ass beat. I've been locked in. I ain't gonna lie. I've been locked in strictly on Lakers, man. Pat, it's funny. Pat, Dave Chappelle said that Kanye got in so much trouble that Kyrie got in trouble, which I thought was a, a pretty funny thing uh, or a pretty funny, funny way to frame Dude, it. Because man, Kanye, I don't think Kanye helped it because he come to Kyrie like like his aide and put more flame. Wow, oh my God, this that's like he did it. Kyrie, uh, uh, Kanye did that with Stephen A. Smith. Like Stephen A's like, what are you putting me on your thing right now? Oh, he, he man. Put, yeah, Stephen A's probably want no part of that. Yeah, yeah. Kanye is another guy that's not not on my uh, friendly. And I, I hated him before a lot of this. But again, if you think someone's hating you, 
Like, I'm sure if someone you thought was like, I hate black people, if that's what you believed about them, it's like, well, I don't fuck with that guy. That's how I feel about both of them. Oh. And respectfully, though. It's always you're, respectfully. You're, you're, you're entitled to that. I want to let you know. Like, seriously, you're entitled to that. Just like the next person is, too. So Thank it you. don't change, bro. Don't change. It honestly seemed like both of you guys are in the same boat as far as Kevin Durant had something nasty to say about your shot, Dave. And then uh, it seemed like Kevin Durant was kind of saying something about you today on Twitter, Pat. I, I, I don't know. What did he say? Uh, I think that you said in your quote after the game that you were the reason that kind of, you, you set the tone defensively for I the did. Lakers against the Nets. And uh, I did. someone agreed with you saying that. And then he said, no, he didn't. Essentially, yeah. he basically well, that said mean, that you didn't. Well, that mean I did then. That's exactly <laughs> what that means, motherfucker. That motherfucker, uh, you uh, you ran the stop sign. No, I didn't. Yeah, motherfucker, you did. You know, yeah. That's, I mean, that's a easy. So yeah, hell yeah. Did you see what I did? I did see what you did. You were in his jacket. Well, I, I, I'm like, what? I took his ball at half. Got a block shot. I mean, I'm, I'm a measly six <laughs> one. Like you know, like sped him up. I don't think you guys understand the art of defense. Sped him up, made him go to shit, made him double pump a lot, inverted plays, uh, uh, took the big, put him low, put me big. I'm, I'm getting him coming out, body him, body him here, checking him here. About, man, come on, man. It's impressive. That's impressive. At the end of, uh, I think it was sometime in the third quarter, he hit a shot maybe that cut it to five points. And you were on the yeah. bench at the time. And yeah. he was jawing back and forth with you at the bench. What, what were you guys talking about? So I was telling one of our guys to uh, make him ma go make make him make layups. Like, don't give him room for a shot. Get up under him. Make him make layups. He's like, you know, make me make layups. Like, hell yeah. You haven't made a fucking layup all night. Yo, make you make layups. You know, that's the time when he was getting the momentum. But you see all those shots that, you know, all those momentum shots that he was doing, that shit wasn't on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I set the tone from the beginning, like from the fucking beginning. I mean, they had fucking five points in, I don't know, the first seven, eight minutes. I mean, what you mean? I done my, my job is done. I done. I've done my job. And it seemed like uh, even he talked after the game. You were yelling at people on the court, like, get up on him as if that was his game plan. He was shooting before that and almost taking delight in the fact that he was shooting before a defender could close that gap between uh, uh, him him and, the, you know, the, the shooter and the defender. He didn't uh, want to dribble the ball against me. <laughs> he, he was bringing the ball up. I, I pick him up, he'd get off of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing people don't understand when it comes to basketball, like, Come on, you Kevin Durant. You right, you Kevin Durant. Test your handle. What you mean? I'm Pat Bev. You right, you Kevin Durant. Let me see that handle then. Feel me? Because my shit locked and loaded. Like, I'm ready for you. I'm picking you up at full court. I'm picking you up at half. Like, don't pass. Don't get off of it. Let's fucking go. Like, come on. Let's go. You know? So, like, yeah, I, I, yeah, we won that and we won the game. I feel good about it. Dave, you must have been at least a little bit vindicated after seeing... Kevin Durant get 90,000 likes on a tweet disparaging your shot and telling you to stick to pizza reviews that Pat Bev, a guy that works for you, was able to shut him down. Yeah, no, that's a that's a mild victory. Listen, I have no issue with Durant. I think he's the best scorer there is, so shout out to Pat for uh, shutting yeah. him down. Yeah, I played a hell of a game. Who do you think is the best scorer in the league? Kevin Durant. Yeah. Or, yeah. Who's Kevin two? Kevin Durant. Luka? Kawhi Leonard. Still. Is he as weird as he seems? No. <laughs> He's another guy. He seems like a weirdo. No, no, no. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about like you would fucking love him. All right. I'm talking about he, he is a student of the game, uh, uh, like calls it exactly how it is. He doesn't He doesn't like to talk much because people going to, you know, if he was the type to say a lot of words, people would gauge like any little thing he say, they'd make it real big. So he just choose not to talk. But. He, yeah, that motherfucker does talk. He talk a little bit too much too. So he does. So if like he, if you tell a joke, he he's capable of laughing. No, 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 no. He's the one telling the jokes. Uh, see that you'd never get. Like, yeah. see, it's like you'd never get that from the outside. Yeah, he he looks like a robot. No, he's he's the type of guy you come. Oh, cheers, Kawhi champagne. He oh, there you go, my boy, drinking on that devil's juice. Like he's <laughs> <laughs> so he's he's self aware. So you right, can never you know tell what the that fuck shit. is going on all yeah. the time, all the time. I think I motivated my peers to get a podcast. Uh, Paul George told me he's getting a podcast. So no shit. I'm, I'm going to finesse him, get him on play. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be on your shit. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, man. Yeah, so. 
You got to yeah, finesse him. Yeah. There's, yeah. The, there's the clip, though, of Kawhi, because it's, it's interesting he would call champagne devil's juice, because there's a clip of him and Ibaka in the car after the parade, and you can't see his hands, but it looked like he was rolling something up. I'm not trying to put smut on his name or anything like that, no, but it looked I like he was... was a, I, I think that was something from the championship trophy that he had. Okay, just the trophy yeah. was a little bit sticky. Are you guys allowed to smoke in legal states? I, like, I mean, they, I, I'm not saying allowed or not, but like, can you get in trouble by the NBA? No, I mean, they, they took away all uh, marijuana drug tests. There you go. Is there any That's story me. behind that, Pat? About what? About them taking, uh, taking away uh, marijuana drug give, testing? They wanted us to get, go to the bubble. They had to give up something. <laughs> <laughs> you know how this shit go. Yeah. We're away from families. Yeah. What was the Summertime? story from the bubble? You guys are sneaking in girls. Didn't someone get in like trouble? No, I don't know you guys. I don't you know. There you go. <laughs> I know somebody. Yeah. I'm just talking about the league. Was I, that was like a story? Someone wasn't got it? kicked out of the bubble. I forget who. So, Lou Will maybe got kicked out of. The, yeah, was he, it him? He was bringing. Lou Will girl. did not. We were, in, we were in the same team. He did not get kicked out of the bubble. Oh, Daniel House. Daniel House did. It was Daniel House. I don't know. We want. I don't know who Daniel House <laughs> That's is. That's what the I, media <laughs> reported. The fake news, uh, old media or whatever, <laughs> reported that. Yeah. I could have sworn I remembered that they were like they they signed in as like sisters or like cousins. Is like no. I, no, I think I remember. So you that. know, we were all separated on like three different, four different like hotels. Like and like in order to get to the other hotel, you had to have some type of clearance and all that so most of, most of the time guys kind of stay with their stay so I think all that shit was happening you know other places not ours mm -hmm. you guys were on the Our straight and narrow yeah, yeah. Nah, we, we had like it felt like it gave you prison vibes but you know we were like the you know the good prison though you know the vibe you want <laughs> white collar prison yeah something like that whatever you want to call it not like a penitentiary type of uh, thing you know like what a I mean? fed building you know you're not going down for hard time but you know you've been fucking around a little money here you know you didn't pay your taxes here you know I'm going to give you a slap on the wrist, but I'm going to give you this 40 inch, you know, screen <laughs> TV to put on your wall too. So don't worry about it. Wild times. Those are mm. wild times. Could you imagine? Mm. No. Look, it, it, I always said if someone like was an alien and showed up on earth, you would thought like, oh, you were in a coma and woke up. You'd think you're in the middle of a horror movie during that. That shit like, wild. Just crazy. Yeah. This episode of the Pat Bev podcast is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Oh, shout out to Amsterdam Vodka. And listen, anytime you guys get feeling a little down under the weather, man, you know what? You can actually pour it with your tea, put it in the microwave. I know you guys are used to the hot toddies with yes. kind of whiskey, but now you can put the vodka in there. Helps you sweat it out more. I've, I've tried it myself. Yes, the New Amsterdam is incredible. <laughs> with some tea, you can make a New Amsterdam mule. It, ha it comes from an uncompromising passion for great vodka and a commitment to excellence that enabled New Amsterdam to produce vodka of superb yeah. taste and Amazing unparalleled taste. smoothness. It's the Smooth. only vodka befitting of Pat Beverly and the nine-figure It reminds nine me of some of the club. Russian vodka I had. I mean, great, great stuff. Oh, great stuff. Beautiful. I'm talking about the type of stuff where you, you know, you don't wake up the next morning kind of knowing, hey, what did I do last night? That type of stuff. So, yeah. That good yeah. stuff, that good stuff. The perfect taste for a responsible night of drinking. Five times distilled, filtered three times, clean, crisp finish. You mm. could have it on the rocks, have it with some juice or soda, make a classic. And if you cut your arm, you can use it as alcohol anyway to Exa clean it out. Dude, so. there's so much that you can do with this vodka yeah. that no. it, it really is the best vodka on the market. And if and you keep it in your trunk and your gas stop, you can actually just pour a little in and just make it home. It's a fuel. It is a fuel that you can use in your body, in your car, in your vehicle, in your life, New Amsterdam Vodka, the official vodka of Barstool Sports and of the Pat Bev Podcast with Ron. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, New Amsterdam. We appreciate you guys for all the hard work and all the money. Dave, I want to keep on digging in on basketball with you. Um, obviously, you're a basketball guy. You got uh, courtside seats. You just called a, ba uh, a college basketball game. You bet on college basketball all the time. Uh, where, where does your basketball fandom, where did it kind of start for you? And uh, what were your early Celtics memories that you had watching the team at the Gardens? So I was at I don't know if you guys will know this play. The Celtics are playing the Pacers. Pacers had uh, this guy, the Rifleman, Chuck Person, I think his name. And Bird hit his head on the court. 
It like he was older bird. It was like he he was past prime. His back was fucked up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, He was laying, slammed his head on the court, left, came back, and like hit a three at a buzzer to beat the Pacers in a playoff game. Crazy. He crazy. They did. No, no, no. They went crazy when it hit when he hit his head. They wanted to fucking riot. (laughs) Yeah. Well, bird's bird. I mean, come on. Every everything you can have there. Um. So that was kind of the early, and then the Celtics were really bad for a while, and then you had Antoine and like the shake. Uh, with Pierce, and I, I follow those teams, but they had some lean years, and then obviously, um, however you want to call it, big three that came together with KG and Ray Allen. Ray Allen was on my shit. He's still, I know they've kind of forgiven him a little bit, but like I really fucking hated him when he went to the Heat after the Celtics uh, because that was like our sworn enemy. Yeah, that was Doc tough. was great for you guys though. Yeah, he was. He Doc was. Doc was great. Doc yeah. was great. Doc was that, great. That was a dominant team they had. And I love being it, it. So for a basketball fan, that was like sort of Nirvana. It was it was the first time the Celtics and the Lakers both were good again. And then we met in the finals. You have the Paul Pierce wheelchair game. So and then the huge comeback. That was that was awesome. And then we went to war versus LeBron that the next like generation. We're right. back. I think the Celtics are the best team in the league, to be honest. Yeah, they're leading. So, the you Atlantic right now. He thinks the I Celtics, think the Celtics are, the best. are the best team in the league. I think they're the, they're the unbiased. They'd be my pick to win the championship. Pat, you seem shocked. Why? That's not that crazy. No, I'm not shocked. I'm just um, assessing. Yeah, I think Brogdon is a huge pickup for them. Huge. But no, no, no. Huge. Gallinari was even bigger. You know, he got hurt. But yeah, I'm I I can't disagree with you. I can't. I can't dis. I mean, maybe the Bucks. You know, but I can't disagree with you. I mean, they, yeah, most people, they, they'll be right there. Right now, 11, 12 games. I can't disagree with that. Can't. They got to care. And I think Tatum kind of will go through like a lot of stars because it was talked about a lot. He really struggled in the NBA finals. But then when you start comparing it to some other guys, it's like early. He's early in his career. I think oh. he'll take a big step. So I, like I, I just think, too. yeah, I think the Celtics are just very, very good. Yeah, I agree with that right now. What do you mean you like guarding him, Pat? Like you, you think that he's a good, worthy competitor, or you found something in his game where you feel like you have an advantage? That the second one. <laughs> I mean, at, at this and you can rate, check the maybe, numbers too. The numbers every time we play each other. I, yeah. Maybe we'll find it's just out. all the bigger guys. I'm small, so like my size disrupt them. I'm able, I'm able to speed them. The guys who play with a lot of rhythm, I'm able to speed them up a lot, get them out of their rhythm. So that I mean, that's really what it is. We may find out, Roan, in a late November meaningless basketball game because I don't no. think we're going to see L.A. when it matters. I, I don't know, dude. The Celtics yeah, were bad to gotta, start off last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got to make it to the chip, but we do too. That's what that means. And Pat's never missed the playoffs in the season that he's played. Oh, wow. That's a pretty impressive stat. Yeah, never. That That's impressive. Yeah, never. Um, so you guys, Dave, since you are a courtside guy, I want to ask about that relationship. And this is kind of a question for both of you guys. When you're courtside, are you cheering for players and yelling at players at the same volume as you would be if you were 20 rows up? Or do you kind of have to turn it down because you're right on top of them? And Pat, on the flip side, do you ever recognize shit talking from people who are sitting right there courtside? Do you ever hear it? Does it ever get to you? For for me, Boston is Boston is very tough to play. I think everyone knows that. I mean, I think I'm just shooting around pregame. I shoot a shot, ball comes off wrong, I don't know. Air ball that hits the side of the backboard. I mean, the place goes crazy. It's not even a game. It's it's, it's like it's, it's an hour before the game. It's that's that's an old Magic Johnson quote when he they have like a documentary. Uh, there's a lot of them probably, but he's like, I flew to Boston, and you know the crowd. I'm in the hotel. People are like, we're gonna get you, Magic Bird's gonna get you. He's like, you go to the crowd. We're gonna get you. He's like, game doesn't start for nine hours. He's like, people are just like everywhere you go, locked in. Yeah, yeah locked in. But you gotta give you gotta give Boston people a lot of credit. Like when it comes to sports fans and people actually like owning their team and knowing like what the fuck is going on and like knowing like 
a, a possession of bad basketball versus a possession of good basketball, we've got to put Boston right up there. They 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 know basketball. You know what I'm saying? So like, so they're 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 not like in money financially invested just buying tickets. They're like emotionally invested. Like you know, their their heart is in the shit. Oh, one more pass. They're like really like playing for you. Like it's sick. It's real sick. Yeah, I feel like it's a typical East Coast cold weather, like a Philly, New York, Boston. They all kind of have the edge crowds. As far as me sitting around, I, like people probably, I'm, I don't, cons- I'm not, I would not say I'm a disrespectful fan. Like I'll, I'll, if anything, I'll talk a little bit. And if a player has said something that would be inciting, i.e. Draymond, like during the finals, like he was inciting the crowd by his comments. Then I'll chant stuff and say stuff, but it it never crosses, and and I don't really get or condone like uh, fans who get go and everyone knows what the line is. They're, like you don't have to be an idiot to know what the line is. That I never get that, and I don't do that. Like um, so I I you're trying to win, but the. You know, if you're starting to talk about it like a guy's family and shit, like, I would never do that. Like, so we play, we, we play you guys. You go be, you go be courtside. Yeah, Le- LeBron has the ball. I kick it to LeBron. I'd he come up it. with something. Well, I do something like that, but I would come up with stuff on LeBron that is is fair game. And like, I don't know what that would be. I would have it like Blaze is a zero. Blaze pizza sucks. That's like fair game. But I would never go. You know, I'm trying to think of the some of the things I really hate about LeBron that I you could hit him with. Like, all right, LeBron. He used to bring the Godfather, the book, to press conferences. Like he was reading it. Like, yeah, I'm reading the Godfather. Uh, press guys, like, hey, what's your favorite quote? He's like, oh, I don't, I don't know. There's too many of them. You fucking liar. You're not reading that book. Can't I don't say even that. Know- oh, can't say that. I mean, you can, but. <laughs> I have to highlight it. Pat, there's 9,000 memorable quotes. Make him an offer. He can't refuse. He ain't reading that book. Why are you bringing it? Maybe it's just like a nice accessory, though. Sometimes guys have watches and they don't tell time off. Or maybe he just really read the book and, you know, got him him surprised. Why is he carrying it to the microphone? Conversation starter? I don't know, because he's, <laughs> I mean, he's entitled to do anything he wants, no? Yeah, but then I'm entitled to be like, well, you didn't read the book because they asked you the plot, and you're like, I don't know. Everyone knows the Godfather. You can't say I, that. When you get him in a moment in the locker room, ask him, ask him, be like, hey, that, that part with Michael, huh? That, he's he's going to be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Pat, you've seen the, Pat, you've seen the Godfather? I was raised on the Godfather. My grandmother forced me to watch it because I didn't have a, I didn't have a male in my life that it kind of teach me the ropes. So she forced me to watch The Godfather. So yeah, yeah, we don't talk about family business outside the family. Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't fuck yeah. around about The Godfather. So just yeah. be like, hey, Luca Brasi says you, you're you going to swim with the fishes. He's going to look at you like you don't, he's going to be like, what is he talking hey, yeah, about? Yeah, rest in peace, Luca Brasi too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Luca Brasi got done dirty, dude. All he yeah, wanted to do dirty, was man. wish wish Michael Corleone on his, his daughter's wedding day. I, uh, I would bet Vita. anything that if you said Luca Brasi to LeBron, he'd be like, I don't know who that is. No way. Yeah, he said the he no read, way. I'm no telling way. you. <laughs> he's, I ain't gonna lie. When it, when it comes to like intelligent people that I've met in my life, he's up there. Well, but that has nothing to do with that. That's if you like, did you see the thing the other day? Um with 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 the Migo shit. He went viral. Obviously R.I.P. But he said he was bumping Migos before Migos released an album. No, I didn't see that one. Pat was yeah. on those Miami Heat teams for a little bit in 2010, I think it was so, around then. Yeah, before they cut me like a slab of steak. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was 2010. He's like, I introduced the entire locker room to me. He goes, like, who are these guys? In 2010, he's like, these guys aren't good. He's like, I knew they'd be next. I told them they'd be next. People did the back research. Migos hadn't released an album yet. And there was a whole thread how LeBron's like a generational white liar. No, so so... You know how it goes with uh, athletes and rappers. Rappers give you know athletes their music before it comes out because you know they they don't think athletes are kind of shared in anybody. So a guy might get a get a new album before before something comes out, play it in the locker room for other guys to hear. So that's that's probably what the dynamic was. So Pat, that's you all. can confirm that LeBron was listening to the Migos in 2010 in Miami. 
We could, yeah. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> 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 You're entitled to that. You're entitled to that, especially on this show. But yeah, you can't say he wasn't, though, you know? He might have been, dude. He he really might have been. Dave, you have a lot in common with LeBron. You don't know this. He had a shoulder injury. You had a shoulder injury. You have a lot of money. He's got a lot of money. He's treated unfairly my... by the media. You're treated unfairly he's by the media. He's treated unfairly by the media. Brian Windhorst was his own personal like PR guy at ESPN for like 10 years. I know, but you're part of the media, so... I like and, Brian, and, but he and, he was his water. You're a boy. big part of the media, so if you say you don't like someone, a lot of your fan base and the fan base that comes with the media would definitely uh, agree with whatever you say. So I mean, ESPN was the LeBron network for a while. Yeah, I agree. A king is similar to a presidente. No, I feel like those are very similar titles. Even. Yeah. I think so you guys very, just, you might have a little bit more in common. What do you think of when he congratulates him? I guess I do that too. He's like, <laughs> he? he writes letters to himself on his. <laughs> I guess it comes with greatness, right? Uh, maybe. I don't like this. I think we found something out this show that we didn't know. <laughs> the similarities. What? They're right there in our face I, too. Yeah. Some of the guys at Parcel have said that. Like, Rome might get fired tomorrow. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, listen, it is. That hey, did I've you actually that fire that guy? What's the What's the fucking show I was talking about, Rome? Which one? He didn't, he didn't let He didn't let the guy talk. Yeah, get out of here. You're fired. So, uh, we were uh, just talking about. Was it Glenny Balls when he was moving the laptop? <laughs> I didn't fire him. I just <laughs> got him out of the. I just kicked him out of the podcast. <laughs> Glenny has a job for life. Love that. Yeah, Dave, what do you have to do to have a job for life? What does Pat Bev have to do to have a job for life with Barstool? Because some people have that and other people aren't afforded the same luxury. So what, is it, what does it take to have impunity? I mean, the, the, the truth of the matter is the newer guys have to be more performance result. Like when I started Barstool, it was like almost 20 years ago. You were a job for life. I don't care if you're more or what. It's like it, it, because it was so new. <laughs> But now, now it's a little different. Like, you know, I don't own the company anymore. So that changes things a little bit, obviously. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, and you have uh, had your, your kind of, obviously your fingerprints are all over Barstool, whether you are in name, the owner of the company or not. And I think we touched on it a little bit earlier, but we've had other athletes come through here and some of them have been successful. Uh, like Spitting Chicklets, for example, or Bussin' with the Boys, biggest football podcast, biggest basketball pod, oh, I'm sorry, hockey podcast. Um, what do you think you attribute those guys' success to that we could try to maybe emulate on this show? Things other than just being transparent. Well, yes, being transparent. And I think they're very good. What both those podcasts are are very good at and I think even part of my take, which doesn't have like the pro athlete, people can come on here if and Pat can get or you can get or we can get other NBA guys or athletes and they don't feel like, you know, it's a gotcha moment. You can speak freely. They can be themselves. People appreciate it. I, and, and that's changed a little bit. But I think a lot of media and Pat probably knows this better than I. Why you get the coach speak is because you feel like people are trying to catch it and like, a bad clip or something that goes viral where we don't do that. Like where that's not the goal of what we're doing at all. We want to make it entertaining. People want inside look, but it's just a true window because all guys, I don't care who it is, bust balls. And you know, that's kind of the nature of like talking and, and like locker room shit, bringing that to the forefront, spitting, spitting chicklets did great with it. Um, busting with the boys did great with it, the NFL. Like you see guys, you know, just kind of shooting the shits as, as though the camera is not there. And that is what I think works. I just say, I'm just, I think the biggest thing with me that I've been, I guess I have to bite the bullet now. I hate having fucking people on my show. That's, that's the biggest thing. And I, and I'm starting to see that fucking sales first. You know, the more names you get, the more views you get, the more views you get, the more uh, blah, 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 blah. It's a blah, blah, combo. Blah, blah, blah. You know yeah. what I found like, and Dan, who has PMT Huge Sports, it's almost like a hook. Yeah. Like, if you get a guest, you'll get new listeners, maybe you won't have, mm. and then they'll stay next time there's no. So it's almost like a mousetrap in a way. Like, you see a big name, it's like, oh, I'll check that out. Yeah. But the main interplay will always be 
the two hosts and how yeah. you guys interact and shit. Yeah. But I, I don't though. like having guests either, to be totally yeah, honest. Yeah, I, I really don't. But we got to have guests wrong because we got to keep putting these numbers up before they pull our ass up off this bitch. And oh. yeah, they don't have to be that long. Like, I'm a long guest. Like, you can do, like, 10-minute segments. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying oh. to get to that. We're trying to get the intel out of you, Dave, though, because you're you're an important guest. You're you're honestly the reason that you know this all has come to be. And uh, I'm sure, like Pat, before you came on, was expressing he's like, "Hey, what's good with Robert Portnoy?" You know what I mean? How what's what's I going on? That. I mean, Dave Portnoy, and uh, he and and uh, you know we wanted to get to the bottom of it, but I'm I cur- knew nothing about this shit. Yeah, no, I don't. Well, I knew that's, nothing that's about kind, this shit. That's kind of what works for us like we're very barcel's very unique because like so i went to the ufc fight and the head guy at espn and i have no beef with him was sitting next to us like picture out what they're just this started young and internet so like when we get a guy like pat when we get you know spitting chicklets when we get million dollars worth of game why they renewed we don't tell people what to do it's like we try to find people we think talented. And then it's like, you be you. That's what we hired for. We're not like do this, do that. It's like, just be you. That's we try to find really good people and let them just kind of do their thing and stay out of the way. All right. So I get the call, Barstool. I know nothing. I mean, I know not, I'm not going to say nothing, very little. I don't, but I don't know who owns it. I don't know. Who Dave slash Rob Portnoy is? I don't. I don't know, right? <laughs> I was Ron. So I, he was Rob. You know right. what I mean? <laughs> so I, I, I call up. I call up Margaret. I'm I, Margaret. You know, because anything I need, I need to know some information. I need some shit taken care of. I call her. I'm a hey, Margaret. Bar Stooge just call. She, yeah, they're fucking dope. Uh, did you? Were you on the phone with uh, Dave Portnoy? I, I hit you right back. I hit my agent like, yeah, was Dave Portnoy on? He's like. Fuck yeah, he was. Oh, okay, yeah. I, that was that guy. He was on. She's like, nah, he's the he's the I fucking truth. Yeah, so I no. went on, I went on his shit. I looked at him. First thing I seen was, hey, you, you, fuck you. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, buddy, over there in the corner. Fuck you. You're silly. Yeah, yeah, that shit was wild. I, yeah, I fuck with this dude. Yeah. Yeah. He could. Oh, it happened quick. Like I said, you get it, death, do you ever get death threats? I've been through it all. I, yeah, I've, me been, too. I, I I've been I I've been I'm pretty well. I'm polarizing. I don't really know how I got there, to be totally honest. I I attribute a lot of uh, people started viewing me and partly my own fault, probably. Like, I interviewed Trump. Like, I like they I got a call when he was running for president reelection. On a Wednesday, they're like, hey, Trump wants you to come interview him in the Rose Garden. I was like, all right. Like, really? So I went. That really cemented. And I go, I've been get invited on Fox News. So people are like, oh, he's a crazy conservative. I'm not, I'm pretty not political, but I think I started getting viewed as a political figure. And that brings out the crazies on both sides. Yeah. And that, so yeah, I've had it all. Like I've lived an interesting, especially recently, you know, and, and people can take quotes that I'm meant to be in jest or whatever. Like I got in big, I don't know how much you know, I got in big trouble uh, during BLM. Like they tried to cancel me for saying the N word, but, and, and well, here's the backstory before you like wait, this wait, fucking wait, guy. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I'm going to tell, <laughs> <I'm gonna> tell <laughs> you, I'm going to tell you how it went down. So before There's no way you should have any judgment against Kyrie. Then. Well, I'm going to tell you, the, I'm going to tell you the story <laughs> and, and you can look. So we did a Super Bowl party five years before the BLM movement. And I hired, we couldn't like, we can't hire Bieber. We don't have the budget for that. Or like, you know, Jay-Z that we don't have. So I'm like, what can we do? That's unique. We, we brought back Jay-Z, uh, uh, Ja Rule and Ashanti. Like they hadn't performed together. I'm like, this is old school. People fucking love this shit. Okay. So we got them and I'm like, I'm going to announce this by singing their five biggest songs. I can't sing at all. Like 30 second. I'm going to sing each song. I did that. One of them has an N word lyric in it. I sang the lyric. I won't do that again. Five years later, it was brought up. And how most headlines say is like Dave Portnoy says the N-word with no context. Really, if I said it, I learned a lot from that. and I wouldn't do it again. I am somebody that believes an intelligent person could have looked at that and been like, there was no intent. There was no hate. He probably shouldn't have done it. But you can say a lot of things about me. I'm defending my kid. I'm not an idiot. I knew it was going on the Internet. I knew it was going on YouTube. 
Like, if I thought there was an issue with it, I never fucking would have done it. But they brought that back, and still to this day, people who don't like me will bring that up. And it's like... So, I didn't know that. So people think you're racist for sure. What's that? So people for sure think you're a racist. Yeah, they'll bring that up. and, and But the people who, who know me will be like, no. And I feel like, objectively, people who listen to that story would be like, that's not what the BLM movement or like people really mean by being racist. Like I've never used that word once. And people, by the way, have searched high and low for me. I've never used that word. Like it's not part of my vocabulary. I sang the song. I sent mm -hmm. the lyric. And to be I, had honest, a ball boy, I had a ball boy threatening to kill me. Over? Uh, the, the, uh, the Russell Westbrook injury. Oh. A ball the injury boy? we go in OKC. Yeah, when you took the ball, when you took the ball around. Yeah, the, yeah, I, yeah. I go back to Houston. I practice, and you know, this I'm my first fucking year in the NBA. I don't even know what the fuck's going on. I don't even know, you know, what the fucking magnitude is of OKC. I'm just trying to win a fucking basketball game. We go back to Houston. Kevin McHale, Boston guy, yeah. uh, goes, um, "Hey, buddy, just watch out for the media. You know, I'm gonna media. I, yeah, story has it. Westbrook's out. I, out. What happened?" Yeah, he tore his meniscus. I, damn, what the fuck happened? I don't even know what happened, right? So I, they made the big story to play, blah, 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 blah. I get to OKC the next game. It's police officers in front. They put a police car in front of my house in Houston. I get to the hotel. I'm on the floor by myself. Police guy at the door. I'm looking. I go out in the morning for tea or coffee like a Starbucks. Police guys with me. I, they passing out papers of... A young guy's face on it, like this big. And he threatened to kill. All the shit was real. Were you scared? Hell no! I, I wish I would have <laughs> ran into his ass. I would have beat the shit. I would. Just, <laughs> I mean, it people was in Oklahoma are crazy though, dude. People nah, in Oklahoma. I'm, I'm cool. Well, yeah, I'll I'm never cool. Mind I that. It's like you never know when you're gonna meet like that. I've had. I mean, so you. There's probably a lot of stories you don't know. You're gonna be like, yeah, this guy's fucking. You may be done. This guy's crazy. But I, so I'm a diehard <laughs> Brady fan. Like diehard. Okay. So when early Barstool, like I've gone to jail for him. Like I spent a night in jail for Brady. Um, Does he when, know that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's thanked <laughs> me for it. Love yeah, like story. I know him now and we're like friendly. But so. Give him the early, spark notes of going to jail. Just tell him how, how you went to jail real quick. So the commissioner in the NFL, when they suspended him for Deflategate, the whole, the whole thing was like a joke, the investigation. Like it, it was just a joke. So. Me and three other guys went to NFL headquarters and uh, handcuffed ourselves to each other, demanding to speak to Goodell. And we got arrested, thrown in jail for uh, trespassing. Fast forward, like five, the Super Bowl. What Super Bowl is it? Like three or four years ago, they dragged me out of the Super Bowl in handcuffs. Like they found me in my seat. I had a mustache as a disguise. And they <laughs> literally... <laughs> Dragged me out in Atlanta, in Atlanta. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and uh, so you you got dragged out. The, the, the shit he came back from thirty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Epic fucking game. No, no, wait. That one I was at. I got dragged out of the one they beat the Rams. Oh, okay, the okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And and then I went to the Patriots post party. In the NFL, again, showed because they let me out. Like, they walked me out after the game. I went to the post party. Once again, the NFL came up and tried to drag me out. Were well, you in disguise, of, you're in disguise no, that I was time? In, I was in my clothes. Okay. Patriots fans <laughs> came around, and they're like, started chant like, let them go. They called the Crafts, who own the Patriots. And they're like, we're dragging Dave Portnoy out. And they're like, no, he stays. Uh, Bob Kraft, who owns the Patriots, yes. invited me to sit next to him in his box. The game Brady came back as a buck. Uh, the Patriots, me and the Patriots. Y'all locked in. And locked they in. got in so much trouble that I got in trouble. Because now I'm banned from a bunch of NFL yeah. stuff because I'm on the same watch list as Dave. There's like six of us from Barstool. Y'all fucking <laughs> wow. Yeah, they, he, they they hand out like press releases like, like where uh, – the Hatfields and the McCoys, like we're a gang. It's like, do not let yeah, these like faces. Yeah, like the Smitty McCall gang, dude. We're like, yeah. like an Old West, like posted, like wanted, yeah, $15,000. Yeah. You see these motherfuckers, bring them to me. Go call yeah. this number ASAP. And we got yeah. a roar for you. Goodell did like an auction during COVID. And it's like, um, 
he was sitting in his basement. He's like, we're going to give to COVID. Whoever bids the most can come watch Monday Night Football with me in my, like, basement. So I bid 250 grand and won it. And then they fucking disqualified me. They're like, we did research. You have a police record. It's like, yeah, because you fucking arrested me at the Super Bowl. That's my police record. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> so. but so I distracted you. Were, you were telling the original story about, uh, about a death threat, Brady. So Brady, he had his kid, new kid. The kid's an infant. Like he's the Gerber baby, tiny. Giselle took the kid on a beach in like Brazil or even South Beach. Paparazzi took a picture. The kid had a big dick for a little kid. He just did. He was like. Oh, he was a heavy hitter. Yeah, for like an infant. He was so young. So I wrote a blog. This is way back. I'm like, check out the howitzer on Brady's kid. Peyton Manning could never have a kid like this. That's what I wrote. I thought it was a funny joke and harmless. It's like, what guy wouldn't be like, yeah, dap me up. The kid's got a hog. Um, people did not like it. Who, who did not like it? Police showed up at my door. You talk about weirdos. I had a dildo stuck to my door. Like I woke up. It was fucking. Oh, they thought to get you were like scary. a little kid watcher. Yeah, like people were trying. I'm like anybody who sexualized it to me is insane. It was literally a kid was an infant. Um, but people like he's a pedophile. It was, it was not good. It was that that I was starting to because. Like I, I was on Howard Stern. Howard Stern was like, "Yeah, you're a pedophile." I was like, "What?" <laughs> it was not a good time to be me. Yeah, that's fucked. But it's people full circle like me and Brady get along now. I, I bet. When it comes to people, <laughs> when it comes to people's <laughs> sports teams, <laughs> people get super uh, defensive when it comes to their sports teams. Or if you if, if you say something incendiary about somebody else's sports team, you might as well have insulted their religion. Like you might as well have insulted them on a subcutaneous level because they they will go after you. Like people yeah, will time. get pissed off. Big time, big time. Yeah, and I mean the Brady thing. With the fight gate, that was a crazy time. But I mean, that that was like the lead story, not only sports. That was like the country. So, so did he cheat? In your opinion? No, I don't think he did. It's, a, I mean, the letter of the law, like. So, did Jose Altuve cheat then? Wrong. You can't answer. Jose Altuve did cheat, and that's what I'm getting at. Like these Houston fans are fucking fanatical on my ass. Damn, and not, they won, not, and not, you couldn't get that money. You're sick. <laughs> yeah, and I lost that forty thousand dollar bet. <laughs> no, you lost, you lost only one. You lost one. You didn't lose forty. That's the problem with betting. People think they got something, and it's not like, actually true. You lost a thousand. I lost that, a thousand. What I could have. Yeah, lied. yeah. You mentally have it. <laughs> I, 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 listen, <laughs> I, I, I think everybody. I think cheating is a part of sports in general. It's not true. Uh, what do you mean it's not true? I mean, I, I just I have to say that when you say things <laughs> like that, I have to just clean it up to make sure, uh, you know. He's not agreeing. I, you know, he yeah, gets yeah, like, silver at your door. <laughs> Right. It's well, not true. I meant I meant it more like even if you talk like baseball with like steroids, like guys are taking grainies back in the sixties. That was illegal. Yeah. yeah. But it's like that you go to the letter of law. Like again, I don't know. I've never seen a fucking fourteen year old look like LeBron did in high school. I mean, he was fucking huge. He was like, How do you get that big that quick? Um Jeans. Yeah, yes, but do I think the Astros I think everyone's probably doing it. Yeah, they were cheating far more than what Brady what Brady was accused of. Like, here's the problem with Brady. He didn't cheat in the game that they got it. The, I, the Like, the NFL, I don't want to do this. I'm not going to pull a Pat <laughs> Beverly with ideal gas law. I was about to go down the ideal gas law. Like, I'm not going to do it. It will be here for fucking... Nice try, Ron. I'll, ru I'll ruin your podcast. People I didn't even say anything. Pat People, asked this question. Well, he asked. No, listen. They don't know. The ball was cold in New England. It deflated naturally. No, we come on. You got to give me something better than that. No, it's you're true. You're a very intelligent man. You got to give it's me something dead better ass than that. That's true. All scientists have come forward be like, the ball was exactly what it should have been. It's just the air pressure. Balls get small in cold weather. It's so stupid that I, but, you know, Goodell's, Goodell's a rat. He's, he's an absolute rat. Can't say I that. I actually like, I think you have the best commissioner in sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. And I, um, I was here when, uh, Mr. Stearns is here also, so yeah, yeah. We got some I don't killers. know what I, I like Silver more than Stern. Did you watch he drafted me. He drafted me. I was a second round pick. He's a second round guy, so he drafted me. So yeah, that's my guy. 
I feel like Adam Silver probably smokes weed, dude. He's just such a chill dude. No, you can't. You can't. You can't say that. I don't think know that. he. I think okay. he does. I'm just, yeah. Listen, you can you say that. Freely. Speak freely. I'm just gonna make sure I just. Are you you're know, distancing yourself? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not a crime if you're like, I think he smokes weed. You don't have any inside information. Yeah, it's, just, it's just, it's just frowned upon, you know. I mean it as a compliment because he seems like a chill guy. It seems like he has a good, a, a decent head on his shoulders, especially compared to some of these other G. I'm sorry, some of these other uh, commissioners of all these sports. Yeah, he's smooth too. He's smooth. Like I had a meeting with him one summer. I'm, they flew me out to New York. I had a meeting with uh, Adam Silver, and you know, you were in trouble. About what? <laughs> about uh, you know, Pat, when you foul guys, uh, just you know, when the whistle's blown, just stop, you know. Cause you know me, I'm the type of guy foul a motherfucker, but the guy keeps playing, so I'm like, fuck it, I I'm, I want to fucking keep playing, you know? I foul him again. Like, that was, Double jeopardy. You know, they so can't call was, you two fouls on the same foul. Yeah, so it was it was basically a meeting like, hey Pat, you know, you know chill I, I start, out. I start players, so, yeah, you know, yeah. you foul a motherfucker. All right, cool, relax, bro. Don't you don't know, have to, you know? So yeah, it was cool. He was smooth though. Bought me some Italian dinner. They did it right, you know. Took me to the principal's office, but you know they they took care of me. It was nice. It was smooth. Oh like, uh, yeah, he's, he to, to be honest, he seems like one of the more cutting edge. Like, I mean, he with he 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 endorsed gambling before any of the other commissioners. No. Mm. Hey, I had a referee. It's funny. It's it's crazy how this Tim life. Donnie? No, I didn't say that. You said that. <laughs> but the question, you know, like so this it's crazy. This is wild. So the the the, the questions. So you know, every before a game, they have a captain's meeting. The referees are up there. Blah blah blah. I walk up to all the refs very nicely. I go. Hey man, have you guys seen that Netflix series with Tim Donnie? <laughs> it's crazy. I'm like, that's my first question to everyone. So the referee that I got into it with last year, um, I ain't gonna say his last name. First name is Dave, though. I think I called him trash, uh, and, 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 and you know, in front of everybody, he kicked me out, fined me like I don't know, thirty, forty thousand dollars. He was my referee yesterday. His name is Dave. I go to the ref. I take Katie Ball at half. I don't know if he called a foul or something. I do something else. He calls another foul. I pull him to the side. I hate Dave. We have to let this beef go. You know, if it's <laughs> something I did last year that offended you, I am sorry. But we can't just keep going back and tip for tap like that. It's not good for the game. I need to be on the court. I need to, I, I, so tell me what I had to do. You know, so it was just, you know, it was good that we talk about, you know, Tim and Dave. And I got Dave on here now. It's just, you know, all good vibes. You need Love a team that. building. No. Love that. What are you about to say, Dave? I was going to ask him about that documentary, even though what I mean, I know he's not going to answer it, but like Stern's fucking swept that thing under the rug watching that documentary. He just pulled the plug on that entire fucking. Did you watch that documentary, Ron? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah twice. It, I, I, don't, I, I don't know about pulling plug and pulling rugs and, and stuff like that. I just know that on a, ten, you know, on a scale one, of one person to, made a big mistake on a one to ten scale. Like how shocked are you by that documentary? At first time watching it, shocked because how it happened. Am I shocked that it did happen? No. It is definitely the easiest game to rig because it's the hardest game to call. Like you can almost call a foul whenever you want, you know? It, 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 so it didn't shock me. And I, it, there's also more scoring plays. Me. There's more scoring plays in basketball than any other game. So it's like if you like try that in hockey or some shit, it's like, well, there's only maybe five goals in the game. In the NBA, they're going to score a hundred times. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, it's a crazy story. It's still one of the all time crazy. It's a great documentary. Not crazy. <laughs> crazy it, story. How crazy great, is it that like four of those great. refs, they're all from Philly and they all like went to high school together. They all went to like Cardinal O'Hara High School in Philly. So the fact that only one of them got in trouble, but they all went to high school together. And all the other guys, it's funny because like, I don't know if I should feel bad or like, like feel good because all the guys that were mentioned on there that was like his friends are like, like me and, have, me and them have really good relationships in, in, in the NBA. So I don't know. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Like Scott Foster, it's my yeah. guy. I love him to death. You know Did what I'm you saying? know like, that relationship before no, the movie? That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the thing. I'm, I'm, now I'm looking at it like every ref. Like, man, I can't wait till I see him. I can't <laughs> wait till I see him. I, you know, yeah. like Scott Foster's my guy. Like, he's a yeah. tough ass ref. Fuck yeah. But like, I look at him as a really good ref because he's so fucking hard on people. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, man, very interesting. Very interesting.
Very let's uh, let's keep this conversation going, but I, 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 I'm aware that we all have a, a bottle of wine with us. So I'm pretty sure that everybody is... Dave, Dave has one? I'm pretty sure that Dave has... Oh, he came prepared. Yes, sir. Hey, let me tell you what your co-worker did too, Dave. I want to let you know the type of people that you got working for your fucking brand. I invite <laughs> this guy to my nice house. When I mean nice house, I mean this is my California home. This is something I invested in emotionally, beautiful. financially. Beautiful home. Almost $4 million home. I'm talking about I'm I'm sitting on, I'm, on 22s over here. You feel me, Dave? I got pulled uh, in the yeah. back. I got a guest house. You feel me? I feel like I'm the Fresh Prince of fucking Encino right now. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I invite some guys from your, you know, I'm not going to point any elbows or fingers <laughs> or, 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 or or whatever to my to my beautiful home where I rest and, you know, and where my family is, people dear and need to me. These guys show up like they're in the fucking projects. No, no flowers, no wine, not a fucking Corona, not a letter, not a housewarming gift. Just walk in, keep their shoes off. Don't even ask that I take my shit off. Start setting up cameras all over, knocking dust off of here. Like, the shit was, it was pretty much, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, Pat, welcome to the last 20 years of my life. Take, okay, take, right, take, so, take, okay, cool. take, so take, long, take, take, you, take, you're take, you're preaching to the choir, yeah. 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 High-end prosty, that's what I felt like. <laughs> so, <Say less. laughs> we came, we came with technology. We came yeah, bearing okay. the gifts of our knowledge from our journeys of podcasts yeah. of yore, dude. We came yeah. through with oral tradition, trying to pass down the good ways. Regardless, we're going to crack open this wine, but first, this, this segment, The Wine Down, is brought to you by Travis Matthew. As a premier lifestyle apparel b- brand, Travis Matthew has created some of the most comfortable and versatile products on the market, offering apparel for every aspect of your life. Travis Matthew uses fabric innovations to keep you looking and feeling your best. And today we have the Cloud Collection. The Cloud Collection, a new collection from Travis Matthew, is the most comfortable hoodies, sweats, and more. Check out the Cloud Hoodie. It is the softest hoodie on the face of the earth ever worn by humankind. That is a guarantee, the most comfortable hoodie that I've ever worn, and it feels like I'm dreaming right You're now. You're fucking going crazy right now. Way to be locked in, bro. That's just how I feel, dude, and that's just okay, me talking so off the top. shout out whatever you said, and shout out the sponsor. I guess for sure you guys are sponsor so shout out to you guys travismatthew.com slash cloud and use code pat bev for 20 percent off the cloud collection from travis matthew but right now we got this silver oak cabernet sauvignon alexander valley dave we've gone out to dinner before i know that you're a wine guy i know that you enjoy wine i don't know what you oh, look let's see for how he takes that, let's see how he takes how he takes a, a top off the wine okay. oh what's see? wrong with it no, the first, so, like, week three, I pretty much, like, botched mine. Had to push the cork in. It was like Smitty trying to open up the wine with the boot. It was pretty violent. No, my, we got this. Yeah, you but, got that. Well, my question is, I, I originally thought you guys got, like, silver oak as a average. I'm like, how the fuck did you do that? This is, like, really good wine. Isn't it? I believe so, yeah. Every week we're drinking something at, uh, you know. Something new. Something oh, different. She got all of it. Shout out Margaret. She got all of it. Silver Oak is uh, a... And she's a huge fan of yours, Dave, by the way, also. So, like, it's legendary even her even sitting and watching hearing you. So Thank you. I appreciate it. I think this is, like, this is a $100 bottle of wine, I think. Yeah, we've been around that price point for a lot of these bottles. Eighty four ninety five. Hey, I'm locked in. We got all the we got all the notes behind it. <laughs> yeah, notes. Yeah. I'm, I'm locked in. I like to be an educated man. I don't like to be surprised. It's eighty four ninety five. Silver Oak, Cab, Napa Valley, Blackberry, Chocolate, Tobacco, Oak. A complex nose, notes of mocha, and nutmeg. I gotta get a glass. I forgot a glass. Yeah, we gotta get a glass for our guy over there, Pat. Hold how on, about those notes? <laughs> tax Haven. <laughs> Bro, those notes, you you really rattled off those notes. You knew those yourself? Yeah, I did. A well versed, a well studied uh sommelier, a well studied yeah. connoisseur. I'm glad yeah. you're reading off those notes because I just And I abs- know how to read too. I'm not one of like I was not like, you know, growing up and the teacher asked you to read. I wasn't one of those kids where it'd be like the 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 <laughs> Whenever it was house. the popcorn. <laughs> you could hit the popcorn. You no, know, <laughs> yeah, no, I was always the kid like, yeah, man, I want to fucking read. Let's go. I'm ready. Damn, dude, this is bad because I I've- forgot this was another one of my LeBron slants that he had a drinking problem because he was drinking wine on the bench. <laughs> but you're entitled to that, no? Yeah, well, I- I'm entitled to my opinion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. I think. I think soon as he started drinking wine, I think everybody in the NBA started wanting to like he, copy him and start start yeah, drinking wine. Yeah, he went on like a big, big ass wine kick. It was everywhere. He's yeah. like. It's another one that I don't know that if you like, hey, where I was like, oh, this is expensive. It's $100 wine. I don't know. 
I don't know what LeBron knows and what he doesn't know. He knows a lot. He says he knows a lot. You know, I just feel like to have that much success since your sophomore year in high school, you got to think he's been playing a high level of basketball brand since his sophomore year in high school. That's 22, 23 years of like just dominance. So, but you, you have also, to know a lot. You, you also, when you're as good as long as he has been, so you he end is up good. Get, I've come, I admit that he is a talented basketball player. Um, but you also probably get surrounded by yes men your entire life. Not true. No, not him. I'm, I'm, I've been around some of his guys, them phenomenal guys. You're talking about like uh, game changer guys when it comes to, you know, Rich Paul agent, when it comes to Ramos, his day to day guy who, 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 who handles everything top notch. You talk about math who took, you know, the Nike. The fuck is that sound, by the way? Can you hear yeah, that yes. in your ears? I'm trying yeah, to open this, this wine, all right? With. I'm struggling is, right this now. This wine's been kicking with, my Dave. ass. Dave, this is what <laughs> I have to deal with on a daily. This is, this is the people you brung around me. You expect me to have some type of patience with these people. I have people laughing in the background. You know, <laughs> I was I'm trying just, to, like, listen to what you said. It sounded like we had, like, Darth Vader in our yeah. ears. <laughs> what, what am I to do here? What, how am I supposed to open up this wine? Dude, I need a better opener. I got no, this. No, you're supposed to have someone open it for you. Jordan, can you help me out? Do you not know how to use a, you don't know how to use an opener? I yeah. mean, I've, it's week to week wow. with me. It's very week to week with me. Last week, well, flawless. Well, this week, well, I'm Dave, going through. I appreciate through you coming on the show. I, I'm trying to wait on Rome, but he's going to, Pat, he, you got the wine on the floor. You're sick. You're I'm sick, trying to have man. it away from the microphone. I'm trying to balance this out by having it away from the mic. It's really good wine. Is it's it? really good wine. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's solid. I'd it love is. to know someday. I do. I'd love to find out someday. Uh, I, but I did have a question as I was listening in on you guys. How do you guys know, as two guys who, you know, have made uh, a decent amount of money in your careers, both, mm -mm. both probably part of the nine-figure club? Uh, What's the nine-figure club? I like, you know, for my viewers to kind of actually hear, hear you say it. Nine What's figures, a nine-figure? Like what someone who's that? made over $100 million in their career? Yeah, I'm in that shit. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> you rich bastards. <laughs> but wait, so so you guys uh, talked about LeBron having yes men. And I'm curious. No, we did not talk about that. I did. Dave, Dave did. And you said he didn't. And, and Dave said, said he that he did. So you talked about it, but you didn't I, confirm it or deny it. But my question not, is this. As, he, two, as two guys who have means, not. you guys have means like that, though. How do you know... Uh, when something like that is happening? How do you know when someone in, inside your inner circle is becoming a yes man or laughing a little bit too hard at your jokes? Or like, how do you judge someone's true intentions as they try to get your ear as a friend, as a business partner, as anything like that? So my, mine came when I was, uh, fortunately, mine came when I was early in the NBA. I was in a really expensive car. I think, I don't know, I first got my fucking check. I think I bought a fucking Rolls Royce. I was on the E-Way one day. I don't know. I might have been going on a good 97. And everyone in the car was like, hell yeah, hell yeah. And I'm thinking in my head, like, yeah, maybe I should, like, slow down, drop them off. Because I don't think they're the, the best, you know, cup of tea of friends for me. So I, I found that at a young age, you know, and that was mine. So, yeah. It's, so I think, weirdly, like, for Barstool, we, we were like, you know, I had a nine to five and we weren't successful for a long time. So super grounded, but you know, Roan, like most of the people around Barstool have been there for a long time. So it's not like you get a big check. They developed with us. And I don't really let new people into my circle very often. Love I don't that. have a circle. Yeah. Yeah. And what about with like a business, by the way, I open up the wine and it's delicious. I totally agree it with great. you, my very rich friends. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do business with any of my friends. You don't? Oh Zero. yeah, no, me neither. Really. Hell no. Because no. I don't got time for like, because I'm a... Like I, I enjoy money. I like to, I spend a lot of money. So in order to, you know, spend a lot of money, I have to make a lot of money. You know, so like, you know, when it comes to finance, I don't really like to fuck with my money. My homies owe me. Now nah, I'm looking at you crazy. I want to go upside, you know, side of your fucking head with a bat. Like I don't, I don't like that pressure and I don't think they don't either. Yeah. Um, Was that Dave, uh, uh, have you, uh, have you spent any time in, in Italy or France? I've been to Italy, never France. I did like a vacation, in Italy before I really made a ton of money. So it was like a very like go this place, drive two hours, see, you know, we, we were quick. It, it was right, right, and right. on a budget. They were going broke, 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 yeah, broke. Yeah, it was a broke, yeah. right. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it, like we still got there, but 
just like everything, it, you you I'd do things very differently now if I had the opportunity. Oh, that's went. nice. Keep walking. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh that smells good. Great you don't smell. Dip Keep into walking. it, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So what, why not go back to one of those places, one of these regions that have great wine? Maybe you could have this, you know, European vacation. Dave, any interest in getting back over there? Yeah, I want to go to Capri. Ooh, why Capri? That's like, I've heard it's beautiful. It's like an island it off Italy. Yeah, right. I've heard great things. My right. biggest thing is, well, summers I love in New England, so I don't like. I like being there. I don't love. I like travel, but you know, we're still working a lot. And if you're going to Italy or other places, you need weeks. There, that reminds me of a, a. I forget what it was. That's another. I think LeBron was in Greece and he was too afraid to jump off a diving board. That was one of my favorite videos. He he got paralyzed with fear trying to jump off a diving board. Yeah, I don't think, you know, from a financial standpoint, I don't think he probably wanted to do that, you know. <laughs> Feet first, first time, you know, no yeah. no reason to dive in. And, you know, they got crazy shit in our contracts anyway. Like, we can't ride jet skis. You can't do a snowmobile and can't hop on a skateboard, can't hop on a snowboard, can't fucking ski. Like, yeah, anything can't be two wheels, have to be over three wheels. So, like, yeah, it's a lot of stipulations. So I can just imagine. They... They probably don't him, want him, you know, swimming without people watching, you know. So let's be honest. Comes with the territory. LeBron doesn't give a goat. fuck what people say. In his con LeBron is the contract. LeBron does what LeBron wants to do. Nobody's going to contract you. Can't do this. And he, he, he's a great player. I'm not going to call him the absolute goat. Not better than MJ. No, I wouldn't say. You know, MJ is in a different. I just feel like they're just two different lines. So yeah, Dave, different LeBron, lines. second best player of all time. Dave, why no. don't you rank the five best players of all time? All right, I got MJ one, Bill Russell two. I know it's different eras, but his his record speaks for itself. A lot of ships. I know it's hard. It's hard. There's so you have many to great say players. Him. I know, but you have to say him. That's my, that's what's the hard part. Not the great players. Shaq. The person you. So you're going to two centers on that. You're going to two centers in a row. Magic. <laughs> Heard. I promise you, if LeBron paid for the Boston Celtics, oh, my God. You would literally have a baby. I, I, listen, <laughs> it, LeBron I, I, probably, I probably would have. I probably would have. But if he left Boston, like how he left Cleveland the first time, I would. The decision. And came back and won a championship? Yeah. He's a good player. I don't know what you want me to say. You got him at six, sixth of all time? I'm still going down this list here. Because uh, you didn't say Kobe. Kobe, yeah. He's definitely Kareem. Um, Wilt. <laughs> hey, they say it was a crazy number about Wilt, the amount of, like the amount of women he's been with. Some, some yeah, wild. like 100. Yeah, yeah. Like 20,000, uh, he said. Some, 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 like, so if you did the math. It was like impossible, right? Yeah, like if you did the math. Or it was possible and he was just. Four a day since when he was 15 or something like that. Yeah, they would yeah. have been in like the locker room at half that. And no, no I mean, repeats. Listen, I'm going to say no something. No repeats? He said that? No repeats. No, he didn't. Well, that's the only way that the number could make sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. I'll say I, something. This is as much as like, I'm going to say. And it's like a half. It's like four and a half a day. So how does that work? Is it? Impot. Yeah, it's just Pat hand Beverly job. got no. me to say this. LeBron's a top 10 all-time player. That's on clip, the court. Clip that. You know what? And you know what? I'll take that because in your book, top 10 really means top three. So bottom 5,000 human in the NBA. Though. <laughs> Can't say that. Well, there's probably not can, even 5,000 so. humans in the NBA. You know what I mean? So that means he's top 5,000 too, though. I think that that was fair. I think that that was, I think, Dave, I, I think that showed a lot of growth. I think that that was very generous of, of you to say that. That's what happens when you come on the show. You, yeah, it's a give and take. Yeah, you come on the show, after you leave, you feel a little lighter. That's the that's the meaning behind this, you know? We speak a little shit, we're going to tell the truth and feel a little lighter, you know? You heard, he likes LeBron now. And the wine uh, starts I, I I admitted he was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, dude. And I really think that that's all, all that we can ask for out of this exchange. I feel like that's shown tremendous growth. Um, and I also, next time I'm going to come to Pat Bev's house, I'm going to have a gift. I'll, have, I'll bring a gift. Let's get LeBron on the show. We can hash it out man to man.
I'll no, even I'll eat some Blaze you pizza. You don't want that. <laughs> hey, look, you know what? He's the type of sit on here and just smile all the time. Like he's he's a he's a smooth motherfucker. That's a smooth motherfucker. Yeah. Before we Shout go, Pat, to, Pat, you didn't see my you, you didn't see that shot that I hit. Uh, Come on, hey Ron, listen, baby, listen. I'm a part of the new media, baby. I see everything. <laughs> it's my job to see literally see everything and hear everything. But the celebration you did was uh, I seen that before. Where'd you see it? I fucking did. What do you mean? <laughs> it, 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 I see it. I, it was my shit, you know? That was but an homage. I know, but you didn't give me like you you, you 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 didn't get lost in it. You just you absorbed it a little bit and then let it like you didn't get lost in it. You didn't like 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 you know take off jersey, rip buttons off, you know like <laughs> stick up middle finger. Like people were expecting a lot more from you than just you know like people you didn't, didn't even expect it, like, that. People, I ran over to that uh, table like a toddler, dude. I ran yeah. over to the scoring table and with the premeditation, I was like, I'm doing the Pat Bev homage. If I yeah. hit my shot, maybe a one in uh 100 shot that I make that on Great the first shot try. Too. Great <laughs> shot. Ugly form, chest pass form, but that's not what yeah. it's about. I was in but a suit. But the speed to the table, like your 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 form and speed to the table was great. The way you got on the table, you didn't get on the top part, but just the middle part that if you're on it too long, you might fall through that motherfucker. That was great. But then now <laughs> it's time to get lost in it. And it, I don't think you gave me what I needed. The, the, like, you didn't Damn. you didn't give it all to me. Fuck. You know? That my problem is I'll never be in that scenario again. And I I'm I'm surprised that you even gave me the credit of getting onto the table because when I got onto the table, I looked like a toddler with like tight joints, dude. It was like yeah. impossible for me to even climb up. I thought I could just jump onto the table. No, no, that's, I got no, waist a, to yeah. waist with the table. I was like, dude, this table's gonna beat my ass. I'll fall yeah, yeah, off this you, table if I try yeah, and jump you, up there. Yeah. Yeah, no, that motherfucker, yeah. That's I if you guys didn't see the video, I, I had a couple problems with it. I stepped on it. I Fucking adrenaline was pumping. I fucking fell off. Security grabbed me, pushed me back on. I fell forward. I, oh, shit. Let me hold on to somebody down here who does announcing. Yeah, that shit was a while. <laughs> I just had to go to the tip of the cap. You know what I mean? That's all. I, and people were like, "Is he's doing the Dwayne Wade celebration. He's doing the Andre Iguodala celebration. No, I was doing the Patrick Beverly celebration. Yeah, you know, they like to make fun of me a lot, but you know, I don't give a fuck. Man. <laughs> exactly. Uh, never. It comes with it. Exactly. Dude, well, Dave, thank you so much for coming on this show. Um, I think no, that I was this, glad to. I think that people are Dave really going to enjoy Portnoy this. Portnoy in this bitch. Who would ever thought? Now and, I got to understand, I was raised in a fucking hood. I grow up to be a, a very nice male adult. I got a, Dave Portnoy on my podcast. This is a I, great listen, day to be it, fucking it's alive. equally reverse because it's a, our whole world is still kind of surreal to like us. We're not, totally. you know. It's like a bunch of idiots who somehow like grew a company. So oh. it's just as surreal for us, for sure. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Nice meeting and you. And for all that money, way. too. I know, you know, it's very undisclosed. I, won't, I will you never the, tell the you price. Got this house. <laughs> you got this house. You got this house. Somebody's got to pay the I bills. Got, I got to fucking afford it. I can afford it now. Yeah. I'm cool. Somebody's got to pay the bills. <laughs> uh, Tax is killing my ass in Cali. Dave, <laughs> thanks, brother. All Cheers. Right, see ya. Cheers. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell Brian you said what up too, bro. Real yeah. shit. Yeah, ask him. Just be like, do you know who Luca Brasi is? I'm <laughs> telling you. He's gonna be like, who the fuck is who what the fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> Luca Dante? Luca. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's gonna say. He's like, yeah, he plays for Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, boys. Yeah. I appreciate you.